was called the <clears throat> election board meeting for September the 6th order. If you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Excuse me, one thing by way of announcement, last uh, meeting, uh, the issue was brought up of making our uh, election board meetings a little bit more transparent by airing them, uh, allowing people to watch them uh, on the internet. We are doing that uh, on a trial basis. So this meeting is being recorded. Uh, the commissioners decided that they would that we would do it on a trial basis until December to see what happens with it, see if everything's okay. And if so, the board uh, then in January can decide whether they're going to go forward with it or whether they'll go back to the way that it was previously. The other thing that we had Sarah do was look at uh, other counties within the Commonwealth that uh, participate this way with the public. There are very few, uh, three or four, if I remember correctly. But the other thing that was discovered in that is that uh, we are uh, alone in the number of election board meetings we have a year. Typically, uh, we have a meeting every month. Now, there's some months where uh, we don't have a meeting of this type. The meeting is held to count ballots, et cetera, et cetera. Most other counties meet three or four times a year and primarily during the election season. So again, when the decision is made as to how this board will operate going forward, it will be up to a new board of commissioners, but uh, it will either continue to be recorded the way it is now uh, or not, or we may meet more free or less frequently or not, but that's a decision that will be made at the time. This uh, recording is not one where people can watch it uh, at the same time that it's going on. It will be posted so that they can take a look at it after the fact and see what goes on, giving them more information than uh, reading a set of uh, minutes after the fact. But remember, the meeting is being recorded, so uh, act accordingly, whatever that means. <laughs> Uh, yep. Does that include public comment? Yes. It will be from meeting and from the beginning till the end of the meeting. With that out of the way, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the August 2nd, 2023 election board meeting? Second. By Peter. Second by Peter. Sonny? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is Sarah updates. Um, I'm working with the ballot. Um, and I know people are wondering when they're going to be going out, the mail ins and absentee. Um, I have to wait for the state to certify, and that's towards the end of September. So as soon as I can. I'm pretty much ready to go. I have to wait and see if, you know, for the state to certify for me. So um, I'm I'm shooting for the first week in October for them to go out. And I will let the party chairs know if it's going to be sooner, later. I'll keep them apprised of that. Um, so this was brought up a while ago. I guess this is kind of under discussion with the I voted stickers. We have four polling places that are having issues. Actually, we've been kicked out of one particular one because of that. There is, the I voted stickers are getting stuck to the floor and we keep getting complaints about it. I don't know if people are dropping them, if they're falling, if they're, just, I, I don't know. But we keep getting complaints about the I voted stickers and <clears throat> the split I wanted to work on for Middle Smithfield Township the one polling place will not allow me back there because of the sticker. So, and I don't have another place to go. Just split that township. Which township? Middle Smithfield, mm -hmm. Eastern. Good 
who we could tap to. I was going to say, I mean, if you had a nice permanent marker and you could write across, I voted. I mean, polling places are hard enough to come across with everything that we need, handicap, parking, handicap access, everything. So, I mean, we even said that, you know, we'd go up and mm -hmm. I mean, although, it, you know, or we might have somebody from our maintenance, you know, but so I'm still waiting on to hear back from that. So we can't really proceed with Neil Smithfield until that's done. With the court contract, we, we could just get something that isn't a sticker, just a handout, paper handout. Maybe we can work with that. I even said about having somebody outside to hand them out when they leave, but I need my workers inside to work. You know what I'm saying? Usually, the machine inspectors, when they've done voting, they hand them to the, you know, <clears throat> but it's been a problem. Um, at four different places now. Why is it needed? The I voted sticker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not really needed, but we've talked about this before and the board voted to keep them. So I think uh, I can speak it for myself, Sarah. I would say continue the process of giving them out in all the precincts where it doesn't seem to be much you and cry, but in the four I would hate to lose a polling place by virtue of a sticker being stuck on the floor. So uh, following Peter's idea of hand them a card that they can either take or not take, but if they decide to throw them, it's another push of the broom. You don't have to be down with a putty knife scraping them off. So right, and that's their issue. I would say for the four that, uh, that uh, are reticent to allow you back in, Follow that approach rather than using stickers. If that, so well, that is the, the way that we'll handle it. Okay, that's good. Uh, my other question before you get into the discussion, more than you've already gotten into discussion, is the update on splitting the polling places. What's? Um, I, I'm waiting on the Middle Smithfield Presbyterian Church. Okay, but that's the last. That I, I went and visited the what's that here? St. John's. St. John's, which Middle Smithfield West, which is at um, the municipal building right now, that would be split with the St. John's Church. We went there, Penny and I. And it's a great facility room. You walk right in from outside. You don't have to go through the church area or anything. It's a, a great little room. Uh, well, it's kind of large, mm -hmm. and the Handicap parking's right there, you know, right by the entrance. Um, and then Eastern, we were trying to get at Middle Smithfield Presbyterian again. That's the one that. Uh, Said so no because of stickers. <laughs> so presuming that that wasn't a fig leaf, they were standing behind, you should have that settled this afternoon or we'll tomorrow see. morning. We'll yeah. If we can get a hold of anyone. Yeah. I've been trying. Um, and um, Tunkhannock, <clears throat> I mean, I had those polling places pretty much set in stone, but like everybody's worried about it will not happen this year, it will be for next year, but which, along with Middle Smith. Okay. okay, discussion. Oh. My brain is short, so I'll go back, Jen, and we're from Polk Township. Um, back with the I voted stickers and versus handing out even a paper card. The only thing I'm going to say is if people don't want stickers stuck to the floor, they probably don't want note cards in their parking lot as well. And I, I think that when people go to vote, they go at a sense of duty to do it. They don't come out with that sticker report at all. So I don't think it's even an important issue. And if, if a church or a, or a precinct place says they don't want it because they're concerned, I would say that we need to respect that just over a sticker. If it's not written in the law, then how important is it to hand out a reward sticker that you voted? I think well, we we've run out of stickers and we've gotten calls, complaints, yes. I've been yelled at. I'm sorry that people do no, that to you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm lot. sorry that that's what the priority is. Um, but I would just caution, I would just be cautioned. Some places don't want it because of the trash that litters everywhere anymore because people are not 
conscientious enough to either throw it away at home or put it where it belongs. That would be my only caution as to doing another thing just to replace it. Yeah, you know, we, we hand out kids pencils when they come to events and then you find five years later you've got boxes of pencils that never worked to begin with. So I just I support the idea that I think people who want to vote they need the importance understand the importance of voting, not receiving the sticker reward. That's all. That's just my opinion though. Voted. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Just to add another, uh, Adrian Savage, Chestnut Hill uh, Township. I mean, you don't necessarily have to peel the sticker off. You just kind of, you know, rip it off the thing and hand it to them. They can put it on them if they want. If they don't. Yeah. So the little cellophane or plastic backing, I would. That just takes time, though, from the whole. Which is the case, so I think the, the theory is try try the card, see how that works, and if that doesn't work, then we go to the next step, whatever that might be. But uh, yeah, there are a number of people that have expressed interest. I didn't get my sticker this time. That's really secondary to the to the whole process. You voted too late. Yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion? Yes, sir. I don't want to beat this to death, and I did walk in late. I apologize, but like it was already said, that if, if there are people who really want the stickers, I've been working the polls for a few elections, and trust me, there are people they they, they give you the dirt, the stink eye if you have to go find it somewhere else because the road ran out. I, I yes, voting voting should be its own reward, but there are people who, whatever the reason. They really do want those stickers. And um, as far as taking more time for the poll work, I can't speak for everybody, but usually if I if I give somebody a sticker, I was peeling it off. But to peel it or tear it at the at the next one, it's almost the same motion physically. It is, but you won't feel that way next year. Okay. I mean, because of the paucity of time in between voter one and voter two. It's, it's gonna be a heavy turnout, like yeah. every president. Well, we've got a mechanism to try in the interim for those four places that have objected. So, other discussion about anything? Yeah, oh, yeah. Hi. The young lady over there. Hi. <laughs> um, I just wanted to. I'm social media coordinator. Um, in terms of like the stickers and the handouts, coming from the younger generation, that is the driving force. I hate to say it, you know, you do want to <laughs> vote for your duty, but. A lot of the college kids and the, you know, they they like that sort of reward afterwards. So I think that I agree that it would be there there would be an uprise, I think, from the college kids about like where's you know, where's our sticker, where's our, you know, something like that. Because people like to post that on their social media as well to get other people to encourage to 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 vote. So for example, if we even wanted to, we could have somebody here graphic design. These little posters and then that way it would be more like wanting to go out and vote for these these things so yeah that's all i have to say good point coming from the younger generation <laughs> thank you anything else Oh, so they go to the bar, they get a little bit of 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 a Many other people in Monroe County, many other voters in Monroe County, uh, not have the e-poll books because we feel that they can be hacked. We feel that our information can be easily put online. And if you could bring up, Kayla, if you could bring up um, the Pennsylvania statute, Title 25. And so, and then if you could scroll down to 3C, where it says accuracy. There's more in, in this in the paragraph that tells me that information is being stored on a computer, going online to update it, and particularly where it says accuracy in 3C, 
It is a duty of the commission to compare and correct general register and district registers to ensure the accuracy by noon of the third day preceding an election. The commission shall correct the direct register for each election district consistent with information contained in the general register. So to me, it's like you the information is getting put back and forth on the computer, so it has to be online, even though, as you say, it's not online election day. So how I don't understand how could it not be online? So that is my one grievance. And my other grievance is, is that if the computers aren't online, even on election day, is that why is half of money being spent? And then why are also state and because half of money goes towards cybersecurity and also state and local cybersecurity grant programs, SLCGP, send money to the states, as well as Homeland Security grant programs. HSGP and HSGP is specifically terrorism prevention and can be used for a broader range of projects, including cybersecurity and physical security initiatives. So, if these, if our information in our election process can't be online, then why is so much money given to cybersecurity? I don't expect any answers. I'm just putting this information out there. Because I am just, unless you want to give me information. Sir, what does that talk about the UP book? I think it would be better to talk to Trish from IT about that. But there's no link between the information in the e books and the internet, per se. Right. So, what's the concern with? Because the research I have done is that they are hooked up to the internet. And they have been hacked in the past. Which which ones? Okay. I'll bring so I'll get my information for you and I'll bring it to the office. Eric, I asked a question. Does the Department of State approve them? They're they're certified from the Department of State. I also did um, the walkthrough um, video process. So I went down with the um, election office and um, had somebody walk me through each step of setting up the polls. So um, logging into the to the ebooks and how to set all of those up. And again, none of it is online. It all just goes to a server. So for example, if it's just like this and not connected to anything, your answers go into the computer and it gets logged into the computer. Nowhere else. I don't understand. It's my computer, even if I'm not logged into the internet, it updates itself. If it's on, it updates. I don't have to be on the internet. So, you, so it wouldn't need the internet just for the logging the answers. So for your computer to be on the internet, it would need to update and stay connected to the internet to keep things current. But for just logging those answers, you'll just hit ABC and it goes straight into the computer. Nothing else is, is done. It's downloaded. Thank you. I'll, yep. I'll put on my I'll get my research together. Thank okay, you. so uh, just to clarify, oh, hold on a second. Maybe you just you misspoke, but you said it goes to a server. So if it goes to a server, it's server it's standalone. It's not, it's it, all it's on its own. I don't know, I see back now. So if you say it goes to a server, that means it's being transmitted in the air. If you're going to say it's been, it is stored on the device and then been downloaded to the server later physically that's something different. that's what happens. that's exactly yes. what happens. correct so yes. i'm just I'm clarifying yes right. that is correct whatever research you may bring forward i'm sure that sarah will for sure be directed by the department. and the department of state right. because of state. they certify them all the ones that are out there and I, I don't know maybe others do do that but I know ours do not. Do we have Connick or we have something different? No way that we have. No way. Yeah, sometimes in, in this yeah. position, we're in the unenviable position of no, trying to. It's gone. Sometimes sitting up here, we're in the unenviable position of trying to justify everything that's happened throughout the United States. And I keep saying, are there improprieties? Certainly there have been, I suspect. But our interest is in maintaining the integrity of Monroe County. If we can prove that Monroe County is doing things the right way, that's the best we can hope for. 
And so far, I think over the past three years, we've put to bed a lot of the issues related to, well, I had friends that did this and I've encountered people have done that. Bring those to our attention and make sure that they're not happening here in Monroe County and that's the best we can do. So all of these things, while troublesome to rehash and replow fields that have been plowed six times before, bring them to us and let us answer the, the questions. Which you've done yeah. for over two years and for which you have been complimented by all partisans. Not all, but some. <laughs> yes, ma'am. When when was the last time the voter rolls for Monroe County were were purged or cleaned up? Because I know in Monroe County you have a lot of people who have um, two homes. They may live in mm -hmm. New Jersey, Connecticut, and have a vacation home out there as well. So I, I would think that maybe there's an opportunity for there to be um, some. Sir, you recently completed that, have you not? Yeah. Well, how frequently does that happen? Well, it depends, but there's a couple different programs we've mm -hmm. run. National Change of Address, and it's all the Department of State, like it's, we have to do. Right. Um, and it just, we just closed it out. Yeah. Uh, June? June, June we ran it. And then some August, August it was closed out. Well, that's done fairly routinely. We have it? to do it every year. And it has to do with when the person has most recently voted is one of the criteria. One of the criteria for eliminating people is the, the recency with which they have voted. Two, two, um, yes, the two federal electors. If they haven't voted in two federal, they become inactive and we have to mail them something. And all they have to do to become active then is go in and vote. Correct. And they're purged they haven't voted in presidential elections right they're purged yes and if anybody that you are notified of has died they're purged also correct right we go through I mean, the daily newspaper every day i look at the numbers a lot and every uh -huh. month mm -hmm. and the There's department of health mm -hmm. notifies us of deaths yeah and we register once as well yeah perfect anything else for the yes. new for the new people for this list um, when the vote roll will be available. When can new people register to vote? No, no. When new people were registered, um, will tell us that um, we did in August last time that these people had registered for voting September, October, when they will be on voting roll. It'll be on immediately as soon as oh, it's I approved. Right. As soon as the information is approved through the oh, department. We're talking more about getting them off than getting them on. The yeah. Getting on is pretty immediate. Yeah. The getting yeah. off is, might have a few months lag, but it's done on a regular right. basis. And I also have a, a question about the follow up when they pull watchers have grievances. Is it it doesn't appear that it's easy for their grievances to be addressed on the website. And actually, Dennis is going to bring those up right now. I have, I have a regarding poll watchers. I've been a poll watcher for the last two years at Polk Township. And I do not think that we're being placed in proper position. We're placed so far away from everything. We can't hear anything. We walk around, the general comes over and so, says, what are you doing? Okay, so uh, it's just ridiculous the way they, we're supposed to be near. And then at the end of the day, we wanted to help assist counting the votes. And we were kicked out of there, told, no, you're not allowed. And that's not right. We should be allowed to know. And you should be allowed to know, but I'm not sure you should no. be allowed to participate in the counting of no, votes. Absolutely not. And yeah. you have to be at least ten feet away. So your thought was also you were farther than ten feet away. Yeah. I mean, 
we were all the way at the front entrance. Everybody walked by us. We were not close to anything that was going on, close to where they were signing in, close to where the, uh, the machine was. We were just placed out in the middle of nowhere. Well, it's 10 feet away by law. It's 10 feet. That and that's what there. I said. Sure. And I fought and fought. And the general kept telling me, no, you sit where you're told and you're, that's it. The general is the judge of election. Judge of election. So I want to be a judge of election because I want that power. Well, um, so I, how, I will gladly speak to the judge of elections first time hearing of this issue there. And take a tape measure with you. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I have it's a that test. simple as to call me. Yep. Very simple. Call me direct. Call my office. Yes. One of us will take care of it. Okay. Um, I just want to elaborate on what you're saying. I've also worked at Polk Township, and I find Joan McKenzie to be very um, accommodating. Also, I can tell you firsthand, these ladies are always available for immediate calls. So um, did, did you approach Joan in regard to your concerns? Have you told her what you feel is happening there? The, the judge, yes. Numerous times I had conversations with her that day, especially just last year. Okay, well, I could just say my. No, I witnessed there. it. I witnessed it because I was, I was, I was allowed to be a poll watcher at poll, and I witnessed both Dennis and Annie the way they were both treated at poll that day, and that was on one particular day where I felt that they both tried in a amenable way to say. I think we need to be a little bit closer. I'm sorry if I spoke out of turn, but I'm just saying I did witness it this last time. I was there. I had my certificate to be a poll watcher. We were not allowed to be in more than one at a time. So actually, I would the way Polk is set up, you could go through a yeah. a spot where I wasn't in the room. There's like a hallway. So as we were switching over, because we we were very conscientious to follow the rules, the laws, so we would never have more than one in at a time. So if we were trying to switch over, say Dennis or Annie needed a, a potty break, we would never go into that second, past that second barrier. But I did watch, I did witness some points where I felt like there was a little bit of anger or a little bit of like, yes, you need to stay in that spot. And it wasn't, I think that we had trained very hard. There were many of us who were going to pull watching classes for six months trying to figure out to learn well. So not to make it that there's anything against that whole judge of elections, but it, it might be about the setup. And, and, and I think what Dennis's point was after the fact <laughs> that it was not so much that he wanted to be a part of the count. It's just that he couldn't even get to that 10 feet because we, they, we were all pushed was, away. Was this the prior? This was the class. No, it was in November. Uh, Primary, I couldn't go. I wasn't in because I was on the ballot. Right yeah, I was not in. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Time is, I, yeah, time just, it was November from the November poll. I, or even the poll watching. Shame on me, but sh for the poll watching, do they do the poll watching every six months? Because is it only at certain poll watchers can be in there for a primary or anything? No, nothing against well, anyone particular. The takeaway is if you run into the kind of friction that you've got, mm -hmm. you've got Sarah's number, call her and let the. No, 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 this is Sarah. It's her office. Oh, it's her office. <laughs> but let, let the commanding <laughs> officer <laughs> tell the general to tell the private you can get closer. Oh, you got it. Oh. Uh, I've been at uh, many polls since 2002. And. Uh, I've not experienced what you're going through. I've always been placed 10 feet away. The judge of election has always been accommodating. And I have made calls to people at voter registration and they handle it if something odd is going on. Uh, I, I, I'm a Democratic committee woman over at BFW for many years. I constantly walk inside and outside, except the year I'm running, to observe what's going inside the BFW, and I do not see anything what you're saying is going on at Polk. 
Uh, I've been up at Pocono. I've been out in the West End at different places, Jackson, uh, many, um, and I've not observed these things. 2002, so just write that down. You know my age. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the point is, in, in an election, when you've got the number of people involved, both voters and workers and and everybody else, as long as the problem is not systemic, it's inevitable that there are going to be some wrinkles here and there. And as long as we've got a mechanism to take care of those with calling the voter reg office and not being allowed close enough to see what I need to see. I think uh, that's the important thing. Yeah, is there something written down, these rules we can get? Yeah, they're on the back of your watcher certificate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There they are. You're right. That's why I put Other them than that, we can put them on a sticker that you won't do it. Don't bring that up again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. Oh, you had addressed it. Um, Basically, the short, the short takeaway is hopefully when you guys experience this anomaly, hopefully. And Sarah already said she's going to reach out to the judge just for any clarification and any concerns. Call her office. The, the people there, the, when, I, when I've had to call, they've all been responsive. Um, hopefully, you won't experience this again. But every once in a while, something does happen. And hopefully, like I said, your your situation, and, and less general, hopefully that wasn't an anomaly. But either way, anomaly or not. Feel free to reach out to the to the office, and of course, it's already in the back of your certificate. Just politely point out, Judge, well, maybe you want to read this line, and if there's still, I don't know what happened to you, with you guys there, but obviously something happened. I was going to say, it's around six, um, a couple of years ago, there was a poll watcher there that had to be reminded. I don't know what this, the physical setup is at poll, but. With the flow of traffic and so forth, they were interfering essentially with voters coming and going. It had to be reminded a couple of times. You need to kind of step back. Now that puts you more than ten feet away. Sorry about that, but because of the way the traffic, because people, a few people were complaining about the poll watcher coming up and, and essentially button holding. Yep. Uh, um, okay. Poll watchers, as I understand, are supposed to be there to assist voters if there's a problem. You mentioned to, to watch what's going on. Voters have the right to privacy in their voting Understood. and signing in and so forth. So you, you don't have the right to be like right up there in that. If there's a problem, you know, you're available there to address issues if there's something that comes up, that's what you're there for. Understood. But not to interfere with and sometimes what happens is like I say, the poll watcher was kind of interfering because the traffic comes in from the back parking lot through the hallway and standing there like Basically blocking people and kind of clogging the system up a little bit. Asked to stand back, which did in fact put them more than ten feet away from the table, whatever. Um, and, you know, it's a courtesy to the voters because we did have a few people complaining, like, "Why is this person bothering us?" You know, you expect to be accosted outside by the greeters. But the poll watcher really shouldn't be. I don't know what the circumstances. No, we were there. trained well in that. We were trained in all the poll watching. In services that we did, we were trained very well on that term about, even as greeters, we're constantly reminded about the line. Constantly. I think that's. Well, we part, have a sign at our place. That, that's yeah, no, clear we're, we're constantly. And you don't I, think, I think. I think we're. Again, we're learning. Everybody's learning. And if it's 10 feet, it's 10 feet. If, Maybe it's a matter of how we talk to each other on these circumstances, but I can attest to the fact that any of the training that we took, we were always reminded about voters' rights. That is important. We understand that. And, and to any of us, no one's trying to interfere with anyone's vote because in the, at the end of the day, we're all still human. We had a number to call when we had issues, mm -hmm. and I call there. And then I confront the judge, and it was like rejected. No, that's not right. Remember, we had the war room, which is part of the Department of State, I believe, or some. Yeah, that was a whole other thing. So, so in regards to what the gentleman said back there, the hat on is perhaps they could have changed the flow of traffic, so everybody could have been happy. 
because the poll watchers are there for a reason, so perhaps they well, need to change well, the poll so. the, the election code is written without, without uh, no, consciousness no. Of, of all of the vagaries that we face with these places where elections are held. We can't. If we could walk, if they gave us a bunch of money, we could build election houses everywhere and have them <laughs> the election code perfectly. You know, we would do that, but we can't. So sometimes the 10 feet, depending on the configuration of the place where you're voting, creates a problem. So everybody just has to work together. You know, mm -hmm. it's really all that we see now. Anything else? I'm going to hear a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Peck was not letting us go. No. I just want just clarification for myself. I apologize. I'm having a senior moment. Uh, with poll watchers, when somebody first, when a voter first goes in to register that they're in there to vote, they give their name. But the poll watchers are allowed to hear their name, correct? Yeah. That, that, that's part of their that's part of their job. All right. Because if, if there's, it's one of these. I don't know what the situation was where, where people had complained about being harassed. When, poll watchers aren't really supposed to interact with people in there regardless. In any way, shape, or form. I mean, if you know your neighbor, you know your neighbor, you're going to say hello. But with that said, you, the poll watcher is there to hear the name of the person voting. And if, if somebody's uncomfortable with that, that can't be helped. Well, believe me, I have people scream at me because why are they trying to say my name out loud? I, I get it from all yeah. ends. Okay. Been through it all of it. <laughs> a million times. I don't doubt it. But thank you. Okay. Uh, can I put a motion to adjourn? <laughs> 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 I second that. No, but no, but you can jump up and down and say thank God when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, motion to adjourn. We are. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.